Hi, welcome back. I have another video for you where we're going to be taking a look at Army Painter's brand new uh, reformulated line of acrylic paints, which they're calling War Paints Fanatic. Uh, these are highly pigmented um, bottles of paint, essentially. They're just, they're just basically the old paints with more pigment is sort of how I'm understanding it. There's probably some new um, colors in here or something like that. But for the most part, it just seems a lot like here are our paints, but we're going to add more more punch to it so that you can get better coverage, which has always been one of the main complaints I think Army Painter has dealt with, was that it was a very beginner-friendly paint in the sense that it was cheap to get and they had pretty good selection, but it wasn't something that I think many hobbyists could go very far with because it was, compared to other companies, considered subpar for a fairly valid reason of coverage wasn't great and, you know... In the world of painting miniatures, you do want to have good coverage. We do put lots of layers, you know, on our best paint jobs. Um, but you don't want to be doing that just because you can't get the coverage. Um, that's not the same as thin coats over thin coats. That's just simply, I can't get this to go to the color I want. And that's not really a good sign in a paint. But they, they to my understanding, have solved that with this line of paint. And I'm excited to try that out. So inside the Fanatic Complete paint set, which is, to my understanding, limited edition, it seems like it won't be available um, after this launch period. I'm not sure about that, uh, but that is how it's been presented in the way I've read it. Um, but this is something I bought with my own money. There's no review here, um, you know, no obligation I'm under. So my review is going to be just straight up my initial thoughts. I haven't had this very long, just a few hours, and I've not been able to do, able to do much with it because I've been at work. So... I'm just going to give my initial thoughts on the box and its value as presented. And in future videos, I'll go through using the actual paint itself and uh, seeing what I can do with it. So you get 100, sorry, 216 paints. And of those, 162 are acrylics and then 18 are washes, 18 are metallics and 18 are what I think they're called uh, effect paints. So you're going to have like different glowing effects. Uh, this is where your varnishes are going to be. This is where your oil stains and your rust are going to be. So it's really well split and it gives you a really nice, um, easy way to identify what type of paint you're dealing with, which is helpful because when you're reaching just four bottles uh, and you have this many to work with, having some subcategories, some distinctions is going to be really helpful in terms of uh, getting the, the right paint out. This set also comes with a bunch of stickers which you know that's a thing that some people like some people don't that's really a that's just a thing that's included now almost with everything I find so that one there is really down to personal preference if you care about stickers you also get four paint brushes you get a couple of their triangular um, grip ones which are a regiment brush and an insane detail brush and you also get a small dry brush and one of their black handled uh, master class dry brushes, which I believe is a moderate. So along with all that, you get a paint guide of how to use these in a bunch of variety of in a variety of ways with different types of models. So something really nice to have um, for a new painter. I'm not sure this is a paint set that a new painter would buy, but even as a uh, long time painter, I have lots to learn. So I'm definitely going to be taking a look at that book. Uh, and see what I can get out of it. So I'm going to go pause this for just a second. I'm going to flip the box over. Um, there's a lot going on here, and I don't want to be sort of like juggling this big heavy box here. So just give me one moment, and I'll be right back. So here on the back, you can see this is just basically uh, a different view of the paints, and it's laid out in this like hex grid uh, pattern. And you can see they're all broken into their color, what they're calling flexible triads. And that means that you get six colors, that have sort of a gradient that start from darker to paler, essentially. Um, it's a really neat idea. I don't know what's up with the name. Um, the idea of a flexible triad is strange to me, because a triad is three colors, and more than three colors is not a triad. But honestly, that's a minor gripe. Um, that is literally just a marketing term they've come up with, so very minor complaint in that sense. It's not even a complaint, it's more of a, um, you know... Just a thought of, I don't quite get it, but at the same time, I do get the idea. I think maybe they just didn't know what to call it otherwise. Um, and triads, when it comes to painting, are very popular. So sticking with a term that the, the community uh, understands and knows probably is where the, the thought came from. 
as far as what it does, I do like it. The idea that you have multiple colors that are essentially linked together um, and designed sort of to be the ones that will look well over top of each other or look good over top of each other. That's nice because it means I don't have to actually stop and think about it as much. I just know I have six colors to pick from and I can actually layer these the way I want to. That's really nice to me. Um, and you can see there's a huge variety of uh, colors. It looks really cool actually inside once we get to it. All of those colors all popping inside their bottles that you can see. Um, I'm, I'm excited to open this up and show that to everybody too. So yeah, 162 acrylics, 18 washes, 18 metallics, and 18 effects. Sorry, 18 effects. Uh, you also get the four brushes. They are, it says, you know, superior brush feel. Now, when it comes to um, Army Painter brushes, brushes are very much down to the user. Uh, some people like to have, like, they'll deal with, like, a $1 brush, and they'll be super happy with it, and they'll get years of painting with it. Um, and then other people want the very expensive, like, Kalinsky Sables. Other people just want something kind of cheap. And these are sort of, like, in the middle. These aren't, like... Super expensive brushes, as far as I can tell. Uh, I don't think there's anything too special. And I've bought many, many of these over the years. But they're also not, like, really cheap either. You know, you know these aren't, like, something you'd get at a craft store. These are nice miniature painting brushes. I like Army Painter brushes. I've had many, many over the years. Um, and I've gone back to them over and over again. I'll get somebody else's brand. And I'm always drawn back to Army Painter. I do like their brushes. I think they're okay quality. Uh, again, this is just going to be down to personal preference, though. Um, now some other stuff that's in here that's of note is that there's actually mixing balls in each of these bottles already. That's my understanding. I haven't checked to shake it around and see, I think there's two per bottle and you get a bunch of stuff here. Uh, like I said, you get your, um, sorry, they describe a bunch of stuff here, like your free painting guide. Uh, I don't know what this is. I guess that it just explains what's in the box. Um, 200 plus paints. I don't know why they didn't just write 216. This is explaining the flexible triad maybe a little bit better than I did because you can see what it is. And every single bottle will have this and tell you where that paint fits in the triad or the, well, the, the gradient. And then finally, they just tell you that each bottle also has the practical color naming. That just basically means that the color is going to be like bluey green or, you know, warm purple or something like that. Um... They'll have their your, their normal, you know, Wargamer paint names. Like, all of our paints tend to have weird names when we're buying from these companies. That's just what I'm used to. But these guys have this little more technical naming convention included. I don't know much about it, but I do understand it's something that is actually used, um, you know, in a more professional naming sense. That uh, And that's nice to have for people who actually understand their paint a little bit more than people like me do. Uh, that'll probably be quite helpful to those people. And here's an example of what they're showing. The uh, the deep greens and how you can use it to make this orc skin. It's quite cool. Uh, there's another QR code that it can be used to explain the color triad. And yeah, at this point here, nothing else really to see back here. The sides, um, there's just like some random pictures and some different legal information, I think. I'm going to pause it again, and I'm going to now get this thing out of the way so we can actually look at the uh, the paints. Really quickly, though, I do want to come back uh, to this. I actually took all the paints out because, uh, yeah, this is how it was packed. Um, and this is not me complaining because I think I understand what the problem is. Uh, when I saw this one other time being opened, there were 216 paints standing in here, uh, just all really tight to each other. And it seemed like that's how they were put in the box. And I don't know if that's what originally was supposed to happen, but I did see one that really, a video where it really did feel like that's what was in the box, was just 216 loose paints standing, you know, in formation, essentially. Um, They did add, I think, trays. I think they probably were originally going to ship them just everything put in the box. It was going to be fine until they probably realized that that was not structurally a good idea. Because now they're all in these nice, sturdy trays. And if you take those trays away, everything would fit the way I just described in here. With the trays, if you push this in to its spot, you cannot get this closed. And actually what happened when I tried is I actually tore the corners. 
Um, and I messed the box up, and it, which isn't a big deal. I don't care about the box. I, I will probably keep the, um, the hex grid that's at the bottom uh, just for myself so I can actually have um, just a very quick reference guide of these. But the actual box, yeah, I'm pretty sure they did not design it for those sleeves, those trays that the paints are in, and you'll see those in a minute. But I, I think originally this box was designed for a different packing method. The, the sleeves were included because of, again, structural issues. They probably had, you know, uh, examples being shipped out to different YouTubers or whoever that were being damaged in the, the move of, you know, one location to another in the mail. And they probably said, okay, well, we got to put something in there. I don't know if that's what happened, but that's sort of what I think has happened here because otherwise this box is half a millimeter, you know, or, or maybe more too uh, narrow. It needed to be wider ever so slightly. So this would fit. And it also had to be wider this way too, because honestly, once you have everything done the way I'm talking about this closed up, you start putting those trays in, everything bulges out and that's why it's all torn up. So that's just something that I thought was interesting and I would make note of because I couldn't actually show you everything in the box because it was, well, it had this like thing. This wasn't even actually folded. That's the other thing too. This wasn't folded, which tells me um, they decided to just not fold one side and just tuck it in. And so, yeah, it was just kind of a mess. And I decided I would take the paint out and just talk about why. So you understand. Uh, so I'm going to pause again and go right down to getting this out of the way and getting all the paints in the spot that we're looking at so we can actually talk about those. Okay, and I'm back. So this is how it looked when I opened the box, um, other than, you know, the actual sort of half-constructed box that was flapped over it and blocking view. Like I said, there really was no way for me to properly show it off because I was going to have to keep moving that flap out of the way. And it was sort of bulging, like I said, and I was actually worried I was going to wind up sort of pushing this and making part of it slide out the side of the box without realizing. So I thought it was best just to take it out. You still get the same effect, though. This is a lot of paint to open up to, and it looks really good this way. I don't know, there's just something about all these nicely uniformly laid out colors that I really enjoy. Even my wife, uh, I, I made a community post showing off the uh, the box originally, and when I showed her uh, the box, she looked at me, um, you know, a little exasperated that I had picked up this big box of paints, but then she saw inside and was like, oh wow, this is really pretty, and she kind of like got distracted so I do appreciate that that uh you know this was laid out in a way that really caught her eye too so it was uh it was beneficial because I, I feel like for a second that she was uh concerned about this purchase but you know fair enough that is a lot of paint <laughs> but yeah it's um it's really cool to have this all laid out in front of me now and see it and I do like the trays that they went with um if they did not have these again I, I feel like it would have fit right. I just think that the paints would have been smashed around in there. And I actually don't know if that box, which is not the thickest of boxes, would have survived. Um, so I think this might be what, ha what happened. I don't know. I could be completely wrong. But otherwise, I don't know why the box doesn't close right. Um, because it, it just doesn't fit. Either they ordered the wrong size box or this originally was not supposed to have a tray. Um, so yeah. Anyways, as you can see, all the colors are laid out in their flexible triads. Your skin tones are along the bottom with your effect paints, your metallics, and your washes at the bottom. And so yeah, skin tones, uh, purples, going up into uh, pinks and such, reds. You got yellows and oranges. You've got some, some green browns, more green going up to blue. And then the blue eventually turns into like whites and grays. There's a lot of paint here. Um, I'm going to pull some out and just kind of talk about the bottles and it's just going to be at random because right now I do want to just show off the, uh, the actual set itself. Because like I said, this is not the time I think to, pro you know, really, um, show off what the paints can do because that would make this video a bit overwhelming, but there will be a uh, follow-up video with me painting with these paints. So here is one of the, um, there we go the rust um rust tone wash so that's a neat one i mean right off the bat i pulled out something very interesting um with all these different types of tones i've always been really good i felt i remember buying the um they used to come in like basically a can like you would get wood varnish or like wood wood stain 
uh, you dip your guys into here. That was my first time ever using an army painter project, our product. And I remember painting up a Skaven army and dipping them. That was the dipping method back in the mid 2000s. That was all the rage uh, for because it was fast. Just get your base colors on and then dip them and they were good to go once it dried. Um, and I've always liked their, their, their shades and their tones as a result. Their washes have been good. And having 18 more washes, that's always nice. Um, you know, when it comes to uh, washes, I really just like known oil and things like known oil. But at the same time, sometimes I do need a wash that is a different color that more suitably matches what I'm working on. And this is a great selection. Uh, going into the metallics, here I have a cobalt metal, and yeah, you can hear that shaker in there, the uh, the ball bearings. Now, obviously, I didn't put the ball bearings in. Now, the only concern I would ever have with that is if they got a bad batch of ball bearings, all of my paint will, you know, relatively quickly be ruined because it would rust. I do assume, though, that's not an issue, but I do want to mention it because that can happen if you don't get good ball bearings, and... Assuming that they did, it's fine. But if there was an issue with these ball bearings, um, just keep in mind that they do come pre-loaded with those, if that's a concern you've had of uh, other ball bearing mixing uh, methods that have been you know, brought to your attention before. And uh, yeah, the other thing that's cool about these metallics, besides the fact they have a nice shiny label, is that they usually metallics would work with mica um, as their flake. Apparently, these are mica and aluminum, or just aluminum. Um, I don't know what that's going to do in terms of actually using these, but I believe going to aluminum uh, is definitely going to have an effect on how these work. So I am excited to also get these used and see how they handle, because that's, um, that's pretty interesting. I do know I like their speed paint metallics, so I'll see if these match up with that interest in these because I always like a good glow effect and this gives you uh, I think five or six of them so yeah this here is the plasma coil glow this is one of their effect paints and yeah they're really just kind of cool uh, looking ones when it comes to these glows I am excited for more glowing effects like I said and I'll also take a minute just to look at the um, pot here this one doesn't have as you can see any of those um, things that they mentioned like the triad or the practical colors, because these don't fall under normal painting uh, rules. So you can't really um, categorize them that way, I guess, is what it comes down to. And I did say that, again, it's got the mixing bowl. This one doesn't have a mixing bowl. At least, oh, yes, it does. There we go. So yeah, they do all have a mixing bowl. I wanted to see if that was in there. Uh, sorry about the shaking. I just wanted to actually get that on video in case somebody was curious if they all had a shaking uh, set up inside. And going through, yeah. It just gets into all the other paints. Leopard stone skin. And you can see that's on the warm skin tones. And this is the warmest. And it's a very pale reddish brown. So it's a really neat way to get your paints um, organized. So anyways, I don't think there's anything else to say right now about these paints. Lots of cool colors. Um... And I'm excited to see how they work, if they live up to the hype of this pigmentation. But um, yeah, if you have any thoughts or comments, questions, leave those down below. I will do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. Um, I will probably end up posting this a day or two after the official launch, which is tomorrow. Um, and yeah, this is just something I'm very excited about. And um, I'm definitely looking forward to getting some painting videos done tonight and over the next few days uh, between work and family obligations to see what I can do with this and I'm definitely breaking out some of my more um, unique pieces that I have so I can really get crazy and creative and do color schemes and mixes that I'm not used to. I've got some battle tech that's been sort of just sitting on a shelf waiting for a moment and I think now is the time to get out some really rad 80s and 90s color schemes onto some uh, some big some little big robots. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Uh, as always, I appreciate it. And if you have, again, any thoughts or questions, put those down below. And you all have a great day.